Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super handy pouch. I call this the Eevee pouch as I was inspired to make it when we got our new puppy. I was looking to make a pet training pouch where I could easily slip my hand in to grab a treat, store my phone for walks and also have spots to put my waste bags. I also love the idea of having it as a fanny pack but also wanted the option of a crossbody bag so we'll learn how to do both versions but I did do both versions in this pouch pouch to make it extra versatile. I also wanted to close it at the top to stop the contents from spilling out but also to be able to open it all the way so I can put my hand in and out very easily. The D-rings will also act as a place to put a snap carabiner so I can attach keys, water bowls and other things of that nature. This pouch doesn't only act as a puppy training pouch, it's great for hiking to put some snacks, a water bottle and your other essentials. Of course with this tutorial there will be free measurements over at the blog post which will be linked below as well as the information I Con, as well as links to products and tools I use in this video and the option to purchase the full photograph tutorial at the blog post. And if you're not already, I would love it if you subscribe, hit that notification bell to be alerted of new and future tutorials, and of course smash the like button as the kids like to say. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. So I will be using a waterproof canvas for the main body of the bag. I will be using cotton for the top of the bag where the drawstring portion is. Um, if you have a lighter weight waterproof material, that would be ideal, but um, I can't really do that with the waterproof canvas as it is sort of thicker. So over the blog post, I will have, of course, all the measurements and um, itemized list of everything you need just because there is a lot of pieces for this pouch but don't worry it's not very confusing most of the pieces are exactly the same i'll be using some silky cord and a little plastic center piece that will be for the drawstring i'm going to be using one inch swivel clasps i got these from something that was cut up um, and then we have some matching d-rings so they're plastic but of course you can Use metal hardware if you like to make it even more rugged. I will be using some nylon webbing or you can use any strapping of your choice that is one inch thick. I have it in a few colors but I did end up only using the black with this bag. I'm also going to be using a size 3 zipper and we're going to start working on the zipper slip pocket portion so we're going to kind of make this all in one so this is going to be the front of the slip pocket as well as have a little zipper pouch inside the layers so i do have this long piece here i'm going to cut it about five inches and one quarter up the one side and i'm going to cut that with a pair of scissors and this is just where I'm going to be installing my zipper. So I'm going to slice that in half. And we're just going to install that zipper right basically in that cut. So I'm going to take my zipper with a zipper pull up. And then I'll take one side of this piece, put it with the right sides facing down on top of it. Lining up the edge of the fabric with the edge of the zipper. And we're going to sew right down there. I am going to switch over to a zipper foot to do this portion. If you're new to zipper feet, I will have a tutorial in the top right hand corner of this video so you can learn all about zipper feet and why I love them. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and just sew right down this side here. Um, once I'm done that, I'm going to actually fold the fabric over and we're gonna do a top stitch right along the edge of the fabric. So normally I work in a 2.5 stitch length for the majority of my projects, but when I move over to doing a top stitching like I'm doing right now, I will bump my machine up to a three stitch length. That's just my personal preference, so if you wanna do that, I just think that the little bit of a longer stitch length looks nicer when you do your top stitching. So I'm just gonna sew right down that edge about one millimeter away from the fold. And now I'm just going to take the last piece of that long piece that we cut in half, place that with the right sides on top of the zipper pull, and then sew down that edge. And again, we're going to fold over the fabric and we will do that top stitching again. So I forgot to mention the finished measurements for this bag will be seven inches tall, five inches wide, and then three inches deep. Okay, so now I'm just going to do that top stitching like I did before. 
and then this piece will be pretty much done. All we're going to do is fold it in half and so the zipper should be offset. It shouldn't be in the center so that when we do fold it in half then you will see that the zipper is about a half inch from the top and then we're going to do a top stitching at the top where that fold is and that's just going to finish off the edge of our slip pocket. And again I'm going to do a three stitch length on that top stitching and then I'm just going to go all the way around the whole pouch just to keep it nice and you know folded nicely in place so I don't have anything shifting when we go to assemble the bag. After this we're going to start working on our side panels and we're going to attach our D rings. Now like I said if you wanted to do just the fanny pack style then you can completely omit this step but if not then we are going to take two pieces of nylon webbing and these are about 12 inches in length and I am going to be doing this just as more of a cosmetic look and that's why I have so much webbing um, I wanted it to come up from the bottom of the bag just to give it some more visual interest um, so it does use more webbing by doing this so if you don't have as much webbing or maybe you're running short you can of course use less webbing and then attach the D-ring by bringing it from the top of the bag. So I'm just going to show you in a second what I mean. But I'm going to take just a little bit of webbing and then you can easily just do it in this way. So it uses far less webbing and then the D-ring will sort of just fold up when you attach it to your little swivel clasp. So I'm just going to sew up the webbing and then across and then down and try to get as close as you can to that D-ring. And I did switch over to black thread um, for this portion just so that you know you don't see how bad my stitching is. Um, but I did leave a white bobbin thread so you might see that so I do have black on top and white um, in other places. <laughs> so because I want to keep these things nice and secure I am going to stay at my two stitch length going all the way up and across and then all the way down and I will do that with the other one trying to make sure that that webbing is perfectly folded and you know all the layers are nice and even on both sides. So now I'm going to show you how to do the fanny pack style or bum bag version. Um, I do like to also use a lighter to singe off um, to kind of close the edges of the webbing also just to stop it from fraying so that is also quite necessary when you're working with this stuff. Um, so I'm just going to take two little pieces and then I fold down the top about a quarter of an inch and I fold down the bottom a quarter of an inch and then I just place that in where I want them to be about, about an inch and a half from the top. Um, it doesn't look so great here, so I wouldn't recommend pinning them, but just for visual purposes, just so you can see, I would definitely just kind of wing it in this area because um, with the pinning, it kind of wrinkles the fabric and things. But um, you do want to make sure that you make the opening of these little loops here big enough so that you can put your swivel clasp or whatever type of buckle you're, you plan on using for that portion. So I did a bunch of passes just to make sure that those are super secure and now we will move on to working on the front panel of our pouch and we already assembled that little zipper pouch so we're going to place that on top and we're going to start to attach our side panels. So we'll get those side panels and we will place those on top lined up with the sides and I'm just going to go ahead and clip those into place. Because it is waterproof canvas, I do recommend not really using pins, um, just because then it will, of course, well, waterproof stuff and holes don't usually mix. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and do the clipping, and this is how it's going to look. And we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance down both sides. And I am going to stop sewing about a quarter of an inch at the bottom of the front panel. So when you are assembling this bag, it is very important to be consistent with your seam allowances just so that the outer bag and the inner bag will go in very nicely. So now I'm just going to stop about a quarter of an inch before I get to the end and then I'm going to do the other side of the bag. And then we can 
add the bottom piece of our bag. Now, if I wanted to be super fancy, I could have taken another piece of that black webbing and then put that at the bottom or, you know, in the center and then ha have it so it looked like the webbing was going all the way around the bag. That would have looked neat too. That's, of course, just a cosmetic thing that maybe I'll do in the future. So I'm just going to take the fabric and kind of try to get it out of the way so I can attach this bottom piece. So I just folded it up and out of the way. Um, it's just kind of hard to attach it with those pieces in the way just because it gets a little bulky. So I'm just going to sew right along there and using that quarter of an inch seam allowance it's going to butt up right to the side panels perfectly. So I'll show you at the end what I mean by that. But it also is kind of hard to avoid when assembling something like this. So, I mean, however you like to assemble things in a box way, you know, do however you know best. Um, I'm not great at doing this. <laughs> but either way, it still works out. It's just a matter of if it's going to be more bulky or less bulky. I'm not sure. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to add on the back panel that has the um, little loops there. And then we'll just do right sides together, clipping both sides. And then after, I'm just going to go ahead and sew the bottom sides um, on camera. So I'll sew the sides there that are clipped and then put the bottom on all at the same time. So again, using that quarter of an inch seam allowance, going down the one side, and then I'll do that on the other side. And it's just a little bit tricky because of all the, the layers, but I'm going to go ahead and sew one side, so carefully trying to line things up. They didn't seem to line up very good, I'm not sure why, but that could just be my human error. And then I'll do the other long side and then do the last short side. Either way, it still worked out perfectly and the bag turned out beautifully. So I'm super happy with the way it went out. So now I'm just going to work on the lining of the bag and I'm going to do that in the exact same way. So we're just going to go um, a little bit quicker through this portion because it is pretty much exactly the same um, constructing the bag. There's no, you know, special pouches or any strapping or anything. So it's just making a rectangle insert. But with this one, I am actually going to you know use the same marking on my uh, sewing machine so I do like to line it up with the edge of my presser foot but then I just move my needle over a few like a few clicks and I'm just going to make the lining a slightly smaller so not too much not like a quarter of an inch but just slightly smaller just because um, if you put something inside something that is exactly the same size then it's not going to, it's not going to fit because they're exactly the same size. So if you just make it slightly smaller, then things will fit in a lot nicer. And I was actually pretty surprised at how well it fits. So just like a millimeter smaller, basically. And the only thing different with this is I will be leaving a two inch gap at the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to use that later for turning. So this is how they should be looking. We have the lining and then the outer bag and I'm just going to go ahead and clip the corners here and I'll turn the outer bag right side out so you can get a look as to how it should look. So by clipping those corners though then you can make it have more of you know sharp corners when you go to turn it right side out. But I really love the way that this turned out so far. Um, it really looks good. All my, my pocket is straight. Like, I'm actually quite impressed. And then my phone slips right in there so nicely. 
So now we will work on doing the top of the bag where I'm going to put the drawstring. So if you don't want to do the drawstring portion, you just want to have it as an open bag, um, you can totally do that and then omit this also. But I am using a cotton fabric that I folded in half. If I had a lighter weight waterproof fabric, then I would definitely use that. Um, but I didn't have that and the waterproof canvas is a little too thick. So I'm just going to take that, make it into a loop, and I'm going to press my seams open. This is just going to help when we do our little casing for the drawstring. I'm going to fold down one edge at a quarter of an inch, and then I'll fold it down again at a half inch, and that's going to create the little casing for our drawstring. <laughs> I do use a silky cord for my drawstrings. I got that over at Michael's in the kids crafting aisle where you know they have the pony beads and things like that. I absolutely love this cord so I always grab that when I'm doing things like that because it's so silky that it just kind of glides and you know the drawstring is really nice. I like it. So I am going to do a seam all the way around. We're going to do that at the edge of that fold so we can make it a nice size casing for our drawstring so we can be able to stick a safety pin or whatever you like to use to uh, feed your drawstrings in with. And we're not going to leave any holes, we're just going to do it all the way around. So now we have the three pieces all done and we can start to assemble the bag. So we will have the outer portion right side out and the lining is going to still be inside out. We're going to put the outer into the lining like this. We're going to line up the corners of the bag and make it so hopefully it all kind of works together. Um, this is how it should look though. And then we can place the little drawstring piece in between the layers. So I'm going to flip that inside out and I want the right side of the fabric to touch the right side of the outer fabric. I'm going to take the seam and I'm going to put that at the back of the pouch. Um, I think it just would be better because then you know the seam is at the back but in the end it doesn't really matter so you can put it anywhere you want. And I'm just going to slip that in between the layers and I will just pin or clip all the way around and make sure that everything is nice and even and hopefully the little drawstring portion will fit perfectly. If it doesn't, you know, what are you going to do? I think it puckered a, just the slightest amount at one point, but you know, you can't be perfect. So once you have it all clipped, then we're going to sew all the way around the edge of the bag and we're going to do that with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we're not going to leave any holes because like I said you will be using that hole at the bottom of the lining for turning. So with the um, waterproof canvas though because it is a little thick it does take a little bit to get through the machine. I am using a thicker needle. I'm going to be using a leather needle. So if you have a good, strong, sturdy, sharp needle, you should be fine. I don't have any fancy sewing machine or anything. This is just a, a beginner brother machine. But um, with those heavy duty needles, they really do um, get through this type of fabric with absolutely no problem. Okay, so now we're going to somehow squeeze this through the tiny hole that I left. At this point, I was kind of worried. I was like, hmm, is this actually going to fit through this hole? Because it's kind of small. But I was pleasantly surprised when it did. You know, it took a little bit of convincing. But I was able to pull it through without tearing any of my stitches. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I am going to take that lining and then I'll just fold in those raw edges of that hole and I'll clip that and I'll do a quick top stitch just to close up that hole. And if you want to use a matching thread or do an invisible stitch by hand, you can totally do that too. 
So now I'm just going to take the lining and put it inside the bag, try to poke out the corners and we're going to try to push the lining down as best as we can because we want to make the edge of the bag as crisp as possible because we're going to do a top stitch all along the edge of the waterproof canvas. So not on the little drawstring portion. So I'm going to sew that sort of on the inside like this. I find that the easiest way. And again, I'm going to do a three stitch length. Um, this will also add just, you know, make it look a little bit more pretty and then make it so that the lining stays nice and put on the inside of the bag. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these stitches um, right here. And that's going to make a little opening for my drawstring. Make sure that you don't cut the stitches for the seam around the drawstring portion. So you're just cutting the little side seam stitches right there. And then we're just gonna take the cord and feed it through with a, what's it called? <laughs> Safety pen. <laughs> it's getting late. So once I fed that through, I just used my lighter and I singed off the edges just to make sure that it doesn't fray. And then I can stick those ends into the little plastic cinchers. If you can't find any of those cinchers, I would definitely recommend going over to the Dollar Tree and just buy something that has one on it. That is also something that I do with the dog collars and leashes. If I need swivel clasp or adjustable sliders or buckles, I'll just go to the pet section and just buy some leashes and collars. So this is how it is looking so far. So now all you need to do is get your favorite strap um, your crossbody strap or your finny pack strap um, and then just attach it to your bag. I am going to be creating my own so if you are new to creating crossbody straps or adjustable straps I will have the tutorial on how to do that in the top right hand corner of this video as it's just this video is getting quite long so I didn't want to make it too much longer so um, yeah I'm just gonna attach that right here absolutely love this bag super excited to use it and train my puppy and if you haven't already seen the pictures of my new puppy definitely follow over at Facebook um, and Instagram all those links will be down in the description box below she's super cute she is a chocolate Labrador <laughs> I said Labrador <laughs> a chocolate Labrador retriever um, we did definitely um, feel a missing spot in our hearts when our previous Labrador passed away right before Christmas so we are very eager, eager to um, to bring another one into our family so thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next tutorial bye guys